Today I want to talk about the blessing of God, and I want to start in the book of Genesis, when the idea of the blessing is first mentioned in Genesis chapter 1 several times. When I was growing up, the blessing referred to a brief prayer that was prayed when our whole family gathered together at Thanksgiving. Someone would give the blessing. It was a food prayer. It would happen at Thanksgiving and it happened at Christmas Eve and Mother's Day at my house, typically. That was the blessing. But I think we all know the blessing is something uh, far larger than a food prayer. Uh, the first time the idea of divine blessing is mentioned is here in Genesis 1. On the fifth day of creation, God blessed the fish and the birds of the air. But specifically, I want to get down on day six of creation, verse 27 of Genesis chapter 1. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God blessed them. I want to look real quickly at this text, and there are five descriptions of divine blessing. The first one is right here. God blessed them. Until recently, the word them in the English language always referred to more than one person. This is a communal blessing. This is a relational blessing. This is a plural blessing. It didn't say God blessed him or God blessed her. Uh, certainly God does put blessings on individual people. But we see right from the beginning, the blessing is in a communal sense. There's a blessing of community. Uh, you know the scripture in Psalm 133. Um, a similar idea. Psalm 133, verse 1, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. Dwell together, brothers. There's this communal, there's this plurality. It is, uh, it is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. There's a lot of rich imagery here. And then it ends with this, For there... This place of people in unity, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. There's a blessing that comes with relational unity. So the first description of the blessing of God is this plural, this community, this relational aspect of the blessing. Secondly, it says, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The second description of blessing is blessing is spoken. Proverbs 18.21 tells us there's life and death in the power of the tongue. God is speaking and blessing happens. We know God speaks blessing. The question is, do we? Uh, I know in my family we have a tradition on, doesn't matter whose birthday it is, whether it's one of my kids or my daughter-in-laws or in the family, and and we go around and everyone goes around and speaks blessing and speaks words of honor. Now, I hope you get words of honor spoken over your life besides just your birthday. Um, we all need words of life and blessing spoken into us. Fortunately, God does. We have his word right here, his written word. And it is God speaking. What we see here in creation, God said, God spoke. So blessing is something that is verbal, that we speak to one another. And our words that we speak to our family, friends, to people in our church community, people outside of our church community, our words can be a blessing or not. God's words are certainly a blessing. So we see that the blessing of God is relational. We also see the blessing of God is spoken, but what was actually spoken right here? Uh, verse 28, it says, And God said to them, here it is, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Be fruitful and multiply. We see this phrase in Genesis. We follow this idea of multiplication all through the book of Genesis. When you see Abraham, Isaac, uh, you, you see Jacob, Joseph, and then we follow it into the, the application to the disciples. of uh, We look at the book of Acts and we see this fruitfulness and growth and multiplication over and over and over. Originally, we're talking about families and humans uh, being fruitful and multiplying. Then we find it applied spiritually in the New Testament to the multiplication process that we see from the beginning of Acts to the end all the way through the epistles. So this fruitfulness, 
multiplication, growth. Uh, I say that the blessing of God is a call to growth, a commissioning for growth. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not just staying the same. Growth means change. Uh, we can't just be when the blessing of God comes, we don't have the option just to stay exactly as we are. There are some places where fruitfulness and growth is more rapid than others, but growth is part of the blessing of God. I know sometimes when growth causes a lot of, um, a lot of work, growth exposes a lot of uh, foundational issues in a ministry context, but still growth is a blessing. Sometimes what growth causes and the stretching of our faith and the exposing of, um, of issues that were already there, like in Acts 6, when we see the conflicts arising because of the growth, sometimes we wonder if growth is really a blessing. But we see here from the beginning that the blessing of God pushed toward, the blessing of God created, the blessing of God was a calling for fruitfulness and multiplication and growth, not staying the same. Then we read on that he says there not only be fruitful and multiply, but fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And twice we see the earth, the, the world, the planet. And so the blessing of God is not just local, it's supposed to be global. The blessing of God is supposed to go from where we are locally to fill the whole earth, uh, not just remain right here in our household, in our church, in our community, but whatever God blesses in our community is supposed to be exported. Uh, there's a, there's a, a mission and a great commission aspect to the blessing of God. And finally we see, and God said in verse 29, God said, Behold, I give you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And then he says a similar thing about the animals that can be eaten and the birds and, and all of these things. But the key phrase is, I give you. The blessing of God is a promise for provision. In part of this blessing, God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And in that blessing God spoke was, I will give you, I give you the provision. I give you all of the things that you haven't even asked for that you need for the mission and the purpose that God has for you. So the blessing of God is a promise for provision. Now, as I close these thoughts on the blessing of God, I want you to notice something. In verse 27, it says, God created man in his own image. Male and female, he created them. So far, they've done nothing. They, just, they were just created. They, they've done nothing to earn or deserve or work toward the blessing of God. God created them, and the first thing he did before they did anything, verse 28, and God blessed them. The blessing of God is not something we work for. It's not something God owes us. It's not something that by our good works, we do things and then God is obligated to bless us. God blesses us out of His abundant grace and love and power and all that He is, even before we do anything, even before we have done anything, even before we can make a claim that somehow we deserve something. Blessing has nothing to do with human entitlement because human entitlement isn't a thing. Blessing of God came on His people before they did anything. And then the final conclusion in verse 31, and God saw everything that He had made and behold, it was very good. And you know, every day God would create, He would speak and something would be created and He would say it is good. He would start again the next day and create and speak something. And he would say, it is good. And this is the first time when he says it is very good. And it has to do with the blessing of God on men and women. The blessing of God that connects the people of God to the purpose of God. And when that's all working together, it is very good. As you walk in the blessing of God on your life, as you walk in the abundance of God, as you walk in the spoken word of God, as you walk into the fruitfulness and multiplication and great growth and you pursue the call for multiplication and you do it globally all over the world, remember, it's not because we did anything great. We are blessed 
before we ever did anything. We're blessed not because we do things that are great or wonderful or fruitful. God blesses us to be a blessing. And he looks on it and he says, it is very good.